Uh, casual reminder, subscribe to Audio Face on anything you're not already subscribed to already, whether that's YouTube or Apple Podcasts or Spotify or anywhere else we're listening. Um, help us. Oh, Twitter and Instagram. Those are social media apps that also help us as well. This is Odessa's The Last Goodbye. It is 13 songs, 50 minutes long. A lot of long albums this week. And mm -hmm. Odessa have been kind of a mainstay in EDM, especially in the 2010s. Fairly yeah. unique, but kind of solidifying this dreamy bliss point kind of EDM thing. Not too much build up, build up, drop, but its own sort of spacey thing that a lot of artists try to copy and um, mimicking it close to. Songs like Say My Name and uh, Sun Models, um, It's Only, I remember from 2014. I mean, like, this was when I was in college. These are very memorable songs mm -hmm. for, like, my college experience. And um, just, like, really big electronic music songs in general for the time. And so... In Return was like a big one. A Moment Apart was a major album that came out that I think we found to be okay. Um, it came out in 2017. It was super early on in Audio Face, so I don't super remember that. Um, forgive me for not having a five-year catalog of all the reviews in my head. But generally, and I've wanted to see Odessa. You, it, it's a typical Audio Face thing. I want to see them branch out. I want to see them try different yeah. things. Um Make sure they don't fall into, especially in electronic music, a, for many reasons, a very repetitive genre, not fall into the similar traps and tropes that you can do in electronic music by just doing a bunch of crowd pleasers, making things that <clears throat> sound the same and don't push boundaries at all. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a little bit of hope for Odessa doing this, especially with the Bronson uh, project that they did with Golden Features, um, mm -hmm. that was really interesting that I really enjoyed from last year. And then with The Last Goodbye, thankfully, I think we have a project that feels cohesive. It feels different enough for them. It feels like enough of a branch out, and it thankfully doesn't feel like it's trotting old, hypey typey EDM ground. No, 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 not at all. Um, I think this is actually... A we have the same. We had the same worries too with Adesa. There's still some stuff in here that I think can be improved upon naturally, especially with like some of the production of it, some of the sounds. But I'll give you like like a quick quick rundown. So on the the first track, it actually reminds me a lot of M83 of how it's produced, especially the first track where it's this really beautiful interlude, how it keeps building and building and building, and then you have this really nice ending for the last like maybe 40 seconds or so. Of it, where it's just like this beautiful crescendo up with strings and a bunch of other things, and then you have the electronics coming in. I fucking love that, and I wish more artists would kind of have ideas like that. You know, I, there really aren't too many people that do it in a genuine way, and this is the first time I've heard it in years, probably, where you have that nice interlude going into it. And from there, I was like, oh wow, this could be an amazing album. And I, I just want to jump that, in really like, fast and say, like, I've seen Odessa yeah. live, and that's like a flourish that they do a lot in their live projects. So I'm glad they brought that to a recorded thing. And very, secondly, okay. Odessa is just very, very good. Um, I think some of the best in EDM and eliciting these really powerful moments in the music. Like, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's very hard to like listen to the first track, the last track, and like not feel like the heaviness and the weight of like what's being said in the spoken words. It reminds me of some of the things in. Um, avalanche records when they're piecing together okay, all these like yeah. disparate pieces and vocal points about um, existence and ex existentialism itself, like what it means to be and to form right. and to live and to die. Like these are very, very like deep philosophical kind of things packed into these powerful musical moments. So that's very good. But um, it's just like something I really like about Odessa. I'm I'm done fangirling now. Continue. You were just talking about like the first track and going to a broad summary. Yeah, so with that, like, I really like the second track actually a lot, Wide Awake with um, Charlie Houston. It's nice how it takes a little while to um, evolve into a beautiful, like, EDM track, but it's nice where it's, it's the level where you're, like, you're at one, like, pretty chill level necessarily. It reminds me a little bit of, like, some Tycho that you can get where it's a little bit quicker, um, but it's still nice and chill, and I really like it. it actually, yeah. Um, Good comparison would be a Swedish House Mafia's record that came out this year. Um, but with comparing the two records, the the only really complaint I have on the last goodbye is I actually wish there were some tracks that were 
a little bit louder or a little bit had, I want to say huffy typhy, but had like a little bit quicker pace or maybe a higher energy. So that way you wouldn't be stuck at one level for a, a majority of the record. Um, like you get that at the Swedish House Mafia, like example, you get Moth to a Flame, you get some pop and stuff here or there. And this, you don't get too much of that, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but I wish you could, like, they would change some stuff within the levels of it. I mean, you get a little bit here or there, like example, Love Letter, Love Letter, like towards the end, you get a really nice glitchy sound, which I wish they would like add that to a bit more songs. I'm like, oh, nice. You get a little different pacing and stuff, but then it goes back to then kind of chill after that and stuff. So there's little things that leave me wanting more. But within saying that, there's a lot of sounds in here that are fantastic. Behind the Sun, Forgive Me, like there's a lot of different things where they're branching out. They're trying to experiment with a lot of different sounds, which is great to hear. A lot I'm of a, different, like even Afro beats and other things that yeah. you can hear. I'm a big fan of Better Now featuring Morrow in the middle. And it's kind of in that the middle experimentation of record, yeah. where it, it sounds almost like a... Bronson, the Bronson, the project with Odessa mm -hmm. and Golden Features was kind of like a heavy, yeah. almost dark record, but it was very energetic. This has that energy, but it's it has that like Odessa um major key. It's like it's very like bright and positive kind of sounding. Yeah. Um and that kind of fuzzy electronic like webbiness that's going on is very, very solid. Um yeah. and it, it I, I do like that I I do you fairly agree with you um, that Odessa could have gone for a little bit more energy in this record? I do feel at times that it f goes well with sleeping. And it was actually the album that like helped me kind of wake up this morning and nurse my hangover. So um, it was That's worked fine. really well for that. But I actually think that I favor doing a third record in and... Let's talk about EDM in general really fast. We don't often get a lot of records because most of EDM action happens yeah, in mixes yeah. and live things, and that's yep. very hard to clear on streaming services. We've talked about this on Audio Face ad nauseum for years. And so at a third album for an electronic music artist, I will take note and appreciation of cohesion in a record. Because I do feel oh, like all the... It, it maybe there isn't like one major super energetic point. And I would say there's energetic within an Odessa context within here. Even though you don't have that, I think you trade that for cohesion. And that makes mm -hmm. the project, like everything on here feels like it belongs in this era of Odessa's musical history. And oh, that's yeah. very, very good for an electronic music artist to show that progression and the ability to do that. Yeah, example, like, you know, tracks like from Forgive Me to All My Life, you know, two of my favorite tracks on here, they're very different in that way. Like All My Life has this beautiful, almost like kind of glitchy sound with how it goes. And it's, Reminds me of some like um, old Tori Ma that was really glitchy and stuff, or even Lessons and his his side project and other things where you get ideas from um, obscure house things that I really like. But then, in, like forgive me, you get more like Afrobeat like um, um, influences and other things, and there's stuff in here that I really enjoy um, with yeah, it. And I, I think I for even... Adesa. I wouldn't even imagine you would like Forgive Me because it almost has that like sort of like loud EDM like vocal in the background. Like maybe I might be saying the wrong track. Let me see. But it, and um, uh, but anyways, I think for Adesa, it's a it's it's a big step in the right direction. And I think in general for EDM, this is actually a very strong year. We've had a yes. couple of fantastic records, a couple of fantastic releases from big name artists that are now pushing the genre that little bit forward, which is what we need. We need, you know, these electronic music festivals. We need these artists and all these other things to step their game up because you don't want it just to be a decade of the same sound over and over again. It's not, I guess, there's just a never ending sounds that you can do with electronic music. There's so much you can do. You can pull from a million different things and create your own. There's just endless possibilities, but I feel like we keep, a lot of them keep getting trapped in a box. But I feel like this year, we're starting to branch out that little bit more. We're starting to step out of our comfort zones and do things differently here or there. Um, and yeah, I think it's actually a very, very 
well done record. It's extremely cohesive, as you were saying, which is nice because there's a lot of different sounds in here. I wish there was a little bit more energy, but I think that just might be me leaving, left wanting more because of how beautiful that opening track was. And I thought that I might get that little bit hints and stuff throughout it, but I didn't, was left wanting a little bit more. But that's honestly my only big critique of the record. The rest of it, I think, flows well. Um, every track is placed greatly too so the pacing even though it's a longer record like there's no filler in here I feel like for 15 minutes 13 songs everything fits you can't I wouldn't necessarily want to cut anything at all I feel like this is a really good length for it yeah I also want to know I think this is the fourth record because I forgot about Summer's Gone so there's like Summer's Gone In Return um, Moment Apart and then The Last Goodbye okay so but still yeah like I think for a fourth record there is you you get a lot of the cohesion here, and I, I do remember mm-hmm. like I, I like in return has a special place in in my memory. Um, mm-hmm. But like I'm thinking about that record and has a lot of range. Like for a, it was a very good second album in EDM. Like it ticked a lot of boxes that don't usually get ticked for sure. Um, so I'm very happy with fast forwarding to now with the last goodbye, which hopefully isn't their last record, or at least. They continue on artistically in projects like Bronson and yeah. things like that. Uh, but I really like the direction that Odessa went here. And I need to go back and figure, and because I refresh my memory with what we said for electronic music in State of Music 2022 on episode 222 bonus of Audio Face. But I want to say that we were in one of those like okay electronic might be hitting a turning point moment because it really needs that refresh it has to yeah yeah and, and we I, I, are getting that this year yeah i'd love to say that we were right i just want to be confirmed that we we're right <laughs> anyways arbitrary scale as we do every episode on audio face because our review is our review and that's how it's going to be so thank you <laughs> so yeah. um it's going to be oh i was looking at the 222 bonus episode and apparently <laughs> Oh man, I remember that week. We did pet federations. Oh god. Um, but anyways, this week it is tequila brands. And I'm gonna give this. Mm, no, no. That's we're coming back to that. Uh I'm gonna give this Dano's dangerous tequila on on Yeho. All right. Decent produced one. using 100% agave at a family-owned distillery. Um, it's technically Colorado tequila, so it's a gringo tequila, but this is actually called the cognac of tequila. Best for sipping neat or with an ice cube. Mm, interesting. I'm going to give this shit. The Santo Mezzaquila. I think it's a decent one. I I think we leave this like a celebrity brand from off the top of my top of my head. I'm gonna give an honorable mention to uh, I just saw the picture. Um it's not C- oh yeah, it's Espolon Blanco Tequila. The okay. uh tequila spot by me has that tequila and it's basically the only thing I can drink, but I have to like sip it because I you know You see yes, yeah, you have to sip tequila. You are not allowed to do anything other than sip tequila. Let's l- l- let's let's you want your bathroom redecorated on sipping tequila. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather not. 